Hey, in this lesson, we're going to be reviewing how to interact with the DOM content. So that's updating the page content using JavaScript. So accessing the document object, selecting elements from that document object using query selector, and then iterating through, looping through them, and also making updates to that content. So just a quick practice lesson about how to interact with the JavaScript code and make manipulations to the DOM content going over some of the JavaScript functionality that we're going to be covering and that's going to be essential for the upcoming lessons. So one of them is to interact with the page elements and we're going to be relying on the document object model. So that's the JavaScript document object model and what this is is uh, that's short DOM and it connects web pages to programming languages and essentially it's what is built by the browser and it represents all of the elements on the page. So you can see every single web page is going to have the document object model constructed and using JavaScript we can interact with the content contained within the document object model. So I'm running the page, so the HTML page here, and this is just a basic HTML shell that we can use in order to interact with the DOM content. So there are some elements on the page. There's an H1 tag, there's a div tag, and then there's a script tag linking to script 1.js. I've opened up the console, and in order to see the content contained within the document object, you can use the directory method and then just list out the document into the directory and that will show the document object within the console and from here you can open it up and you can see that there's quite a bit of information contained in here so you can get things like the web url of the document so if you want to output the console log and using the document object and return back the url you can output that into a JavaScript value. So that's just the URL. And then you can do the same thing for any web page that you're on. So even if I go over to the Mozilla web page, I do an inspect, open up the console, and do a console log of the document URL, I'm going to get whatever the current document URL is. And you can also do this for any web page and list out the co document content. And here there's quite a lot of HTML elements. There's uh, 1,479. So that lists out all of the page elements that are currently on the page. And with the JavaScript, now we can select and we can interact with any one of these. And there's also event listeners. So I'm going to be going over some of the event listeners. And mainly we're going to be using the click event. Uh, but there's quite a few other different event listeners that you can make use of. You can also navigate through the DOM. So you can go to the siblings, you can go to the children. And they're all listed here within the DOM elements and represent within the DOM structure. So my page, because this HTML object is fairly simple and straightforward, there's only nine main elements on the page. So that's the HTML, the head, the title, the style, the body, the H1, the div, the script tags as well are included. And you can select any of these. So within the HTML collection, there's a hierarchy. So at the top, there's the HTML tag. So it corresponds with what our source code is. And then within here, there's listing of children. So within the main HTML, there's three children, which is the head, the text up here at the top, and then body. So this text is just representing the spacing that I have within the content. And I've only got the one return within head. And then as well, I could remove that out. So once the carriage return is removed, if we go back into the children of the HTML object and then go down to the children, you're going to see that there's just head and body. So those are the main elements that we have that are nested within the HTML. And then also if you go into body, you're going to see the three children that we have within the body. So we've got the H1 tag, we've got the div, and then we've got the script tags as well within the body. And that's the difference between the child nodes and the HTML collection is that the child nodes will as well include any of the spacing that you have within the source code. So interacting with the document object, 
There's also the Windows object. So the Windows object actually sits outside and it contains the document object. So this is the main window interface and it represents the whole window as opposed to just the document object. And there are some methods that are available within the window such as uh, commonly used, there's the window alert as well as other window options where you can scroll to a certain location within the window. So if you want it to scroll up and using the scroll Y, this can set the scroll position of the window. And this will reset the scroll position back to zero. So if we want to scroll down the page and then we run the window scroll Y function, that's going to reset it back to zero. And that's all available within the default build of your web page within the browser. So let's interact with some of the content that we have available within the window. And if you want to make a selection of the elements on the page, and we do have the H1. And I'm also going to add in a second div. And we'll add in some content within the div, so 1 and 2. Let's uh, make a selection of the H1. And the same way that you make a selection with styling, you can select the element from the page using the contents that are contained within the document object. So creating an H tag variable and then using the document object making a selection, you can use the method query selector and then you just have to specify how you're making the selection. And in this case, we're going to use the tags the same way as we did with CSS and making the selection of the element. And now we can use that element as a variable value of H tag. And when you hover over it within the console, it's going to highlight that element. So if you are using the query selector and there's more than one matching return item, so if we want to select the div, let's make a selection of the div. And this is going to be the div tag. And what do you think is going to ret be returned back if we're only selecting uh, the div? We've got more than one div. And what's going to happen is it's going to select the first occurrence of that matching selection. So just like, uh, which is different than what we would expect with the styling. So if we added the selection of a div, it's automatically going to be applying it to all of the matching divs. Whereas if we use query selector, we only get the first matching result, which uh, at this moment is going to be the one that has the text value of one. There's also query selector all, and there is more information available about the query selector over at the Mozilla Developer Network. So they do have some examples and it's a document method. So available within the document object and it returns the first element within the documentation that matches the selector or group of selectors. And if no matches are found, then it returns back null. So even if uh, you don't have the matching selection, you're still going to get a response back and that value is going to be a uh, response of, not, of null. So if we were to select H2, which we don't have on the page, we do get a value of null being returned back into the console for that variable. So with the query selector, we can make a selection of all of the divs and using the query selector all method. So that's going to be different and that's going to create a node list of all of the matching results. So in this case, we're going to have two results for div. And if we log out the returned value for divs, you're going to see that we're able to select all of the matching elements. And just as we saw with when we're selecting it and we're logging out the divs, and we hover over them within the console, the same thing happens here whenever we hover over it, we see it getting highlighted up at the top within the display area of the browser. So that's up at the top and returning back the matching divs. And the reason that we can use const is that these are representing, just as the document object, it represents a memory location. So the actual variable that we're using to define it stays the same, but we're just referencing that memory location. So even if we were to take the H1 and we were to make an update to the H1 tag, and because we've selected it as the H tag, this represents the selection of this object. And within our code, H tag will represent that object. We can update contents of it by doing 
text content and then uh, updating whatever we want for the content. So you'll see that now this has been updated and changed because we've made the selection and update of the page content and within the elements, within the live data, this is the new updated source code. Whereas it's different than our initial source code because we've updated and changed it with JavaScript. So when the JavaScript code loads, it updates the code that's available within the within the DOM. And this is only updated within the DOM. So if the JavaScript file uh, doesn't run, then it's not going to update the code. And just as we're able to select the element and update the, val the property value, we can also see the current property value that is associated with it. So if we were to log that out into the console, we would see the current value for whatever the, the value property value is of text content node list will act similar to what we have with an array where we've got a length so if we want to output the contents of the node list and we've got that contained within divs we can take the divs and using the for each method will allow us to loop through and iterate through all of the values there's an example and some more information about the for each method available at the Mozilla Developer Network. And basically what for each does is it's a method that executes the provided function once for each item within the array. So what's happened here is it's looping through, it's returning the value back as element, and right now it's just logging it into the console. And also for the upcoming lessons, we are going to be using the JavaScript arrow format for functions. Uh, so this is different than uh, running the function method. So it does the same thing, but just the syntax is different. So I'll give you a quick example of the syntax for each one. So the syntax for just the longer version where we're writing out the function word and then returning back the element. And we could console log the value of each element into the console. So that would return back this type of result. And as mentioned, we are gonna be using the arrow format. So it's gonna be slightly shorter and you can really shorten the arrow format without even having the return. So if you have a one line statement, you can add it in this way. And that's gonna do the same thing where it loops through and it iterates through the object details and one last one that typically the way that we're doing it is that we're adding in the extra brackets so just so it's a little bit easier to read but these are optional so if you choose to uh, not add in the brackets that's that's proper coding as well so all of these three are going to be doing the same thing and for most part the way that we are going to be writing the code is uh, we're going to be using this type of format and also within the for each function, we can return back the index as well as we can return back the full array. And that's going to be the array or the object contents that are added in within divs as a whole. So if we want to output those and use them as R, we can see that we list out the value of the node list down here at the bottom, which is actually going to be the same as divs. And once again, to reiterate that, this is pointing to a memory location and that's why we're able to assign multiple variable values that are linking to that location and it because this is within an object this variable value as long as you're not changing the link to that object itself you can update and manipulate the contents of the object so if we were to loop through and we select the element and just as we saw up here, we're updating the text content of each element and adding it together and just outputting the index value. Now we're updating the content as we're looping through. And the L is referencing whatever the current div is that we're on with the index value. And it's also still referencing the same way where we selected the first div. So either way of these references are able to return back the div content. And the idea is the same if we say divs and we use the index value 
and then update the text content for that. And this can just say hello one and then divs with an index value of one can say hello two. So at the end, we end up with hello one and hello two as we're referencing the element object. And for the upcoming lessons, it is gonna be important to understand how to access and manipulate the DOM content. As we do get the JSON data, we're gonna be making use of the JSON data and manipulating the page element and the DOM content uh, with JavaScript. So try it out and select some content from your page using the document query selector and then make some manipulations, update the text content of the element and also iterate through uh, if you have multiple occurrences of that element and output them into the console and you'll be ready to move on to the next lesson.